Lorenzo's home, not everybody happy about that. Teresa in jail, but not for long. Lauren is putting two and two together about Carrie. Brayden got Therese back. And Effie to the rescue. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Van coming to you with the full breakdown of episode six from season two of Power Book Two Ghosts. What's free is the title of the episode, and this one did not disappoint. It definitely gave original power vibes. Honestly, season two, every episode is better than the one before, but the one before was hot fire as well. Y'all, let's really get into this. This episode opens on Lorenzo's welcome home party at the Tejada house, and Lorenzo is singing Diana's praise as Monet watches with jealousy brewing in her heart. Now we see where Kane gets it from. Monet is really struggling with Diana getting all this shine, but to be fair, Diana is only looking this good because she stole a million dollars from Monet, went behind her back to Davis to get Lorenzo out of jail, and didn't utter a peep, completely catching Monet off guard, and we all know how she don't like surprises. I guess it's safe to assume that Zeke came to live with Monet after Lorenzo went away because he tries to usher Zeke and his teammates about the party the moment that they walk through the door that makes me wonder if monet had anything to do with lorenzo going away and then her son conveniently coming to stay with her after but we're gonna come back to that theory a little bit later because there's a stronger easter egg that points to that theory being true that presents itself in the episode zeke and drew both have a moment seeing Lil guap at the party and this is still a problem what is kane really thinking running with him for one and then bringing him into their house they know this dude is disloyal at best and at worst pulled a gun on zeke and made drew go super saiyan to stop him from ending zeke's career before it even really got started the same way that monet soaks and stares at diana at this party all night Kane Sox and stare at Drew the new chosen son being primed to head up the entire organization and Everett walks into the lion's den and almost left with the limbs torn off because Monet wastes no time throwing him out after making sure that he knows exactly who she is and I'm pretty sure that this is going to come back on her Drew ain't giving up on Everett that easily Lorenzo calls Drew the best of both Diana and Kane and he ain't wrong Drew is far from soft and is very intelligent and strategic he would be the perfect one to lead the empire except for the fact that he don't want it lorenzo starts to talk business with kino at this party but he's already in business with the broad street killers who's the same organization that renzo was protecting him from while they was in jail and drew points out that the feds has already snatched up most of their organization and after a little bit of more asking around that kino isn't even paying his people right or taking care of business which kind of leaves an already struggling organization primed for a takeover or completely to be wiped off the board i mean Tariq said it best in this episode you either with me or against me and Kino made it clear that he wanted to be on his own have his own and not be with Lorenzo Drew is going to lead this pending takeover because they need to recruit Kino's number two and they discuss all of this after Lorenzo sends Kane out of the bar to go summon his connect that he wants to be able to meet with Drew now, Monet at the top of the episode is looking like she doesn't want the things to go back to the way that they were. The scene where Diana brings Lorenzo breakfast in bed and Drew and Kane bring in his old clothes from the garage. And the kids get all excited when Lorenzo's talking about cooking like he used to in their family dinners. She literally just looks disgusted. But by the end of the episode, she's at this dinner, sitting, taking in him laughing, the kids laughing, the vibe of their family, and then decides suddenly that she does want that. She goes on to talk about how she she owes this to her family to be able to keep them together when she goes to break things off with Dante and it's like Monet sis you know what your kids are grown right after one decision she changes the plans and tells Dante to stay away from Zeke and her but girl do you really think it's going to be that easy you really think that Dante has done all that he has done now just to stop here because your husband got out of the jail this is a war waiting to happen at the end of the episode Dante is watching Zeke practice and he hits Kane up to change his mind about meeting Lorenzo at the very least he's going to meet Lorenzo just to size him up but most likely he finna make a play the scene with monet and diana in the bathroom left me on the edge of my seat this is the first time that we see monet respond to diana similar to how she would respond to kane and i was kind of worried for diana monet yokes Di up against the wall and tells her that she will kill her because diana asks the right question is there a reason you don't want lorenzo home the power dynamics have instantly shifted in their house and monet is basically one of the kids now when just a few days ago she was in charge of telling everyone how their lives would run so that question is definitely one of the most important ones which we will probably see answered in the next three episodes i'm working on a demo they set lorenzo up to go to jail video so hit the subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so that you don't miss when that video goes live on the channel in a few hours
Before we finish talking about the Tejadas, I got to bring up Kane and how he decides to take a stand in this episode, basically putting himself permanently in position as the connect. He lets Lorenzo know that as far as I'm concerned, or as far as you're concerned, I am the actual connect. After getting the kind of go ahead from Mecca earlier on in the episode, and he makes this play because he sees how Drew is being primed. He sees how Lorenzo is taken to Drew more so than he's taken to him. And he basically puts his flag in the ground and, and takes his stake he tells mecca like yo if i introduce y'all then he won't actually need me anymore and what kind of dummy do i look like for me to do that so it's clear why he would do it but this is also the thing that lorenzo was pointing to as to like yo this is exactly why you're not ready to run my organization because you're selfish because you literally only think about yourself you do what's best for yourself and this is not how you would actually parlay that and it's kind of really hard to say if he should or should not have done it because he's right like it's basically making sure that he don't go obsolete within this organization but i also get how lorenzo wants kane to be able to own his position and it'd be one thing if kane came at it like yo this is my position but i want to be able to do more i want to learn more like kane is not the sit back and learn type he ain't the like he's an observant type for an op but he's not the observant type to be able to push himself to evolve the best thing for him to do is to figure out what it is that lorenzo loves so much about drew and be more like that but he like nah, i don't even want that i want to be myself and i want this position and that's what's going to basically start this internal war between Lorenzo and Kane. The Kane is seen with Tariq talking things through with him is brilliant. More and more we're seeing just how much Kane and Ghost raised Tariq with these hallucinations that Tariq is having proving more and more important to his continued growth. I cannot wait for the moment that he starts to hallucinate Ghost in his head as well which may come sooner rather than later given the fact that he burned Ghost's letter in this episode but in this scene Kanan forces him to step back and see the whole board reminding him that he needs to think about all sides all players and who was truly capable of what and had motives with this one conversation he realizes that Brayden has something to do with it Kane in fact set him up and Monet probably sent him to do it this shifts Tariq out of the defensive mindset that he kind of hovers in into the offense and this is what's going to take him truly to the next level y'all they really gave us method man and Lorenz tate on the same show in the same scene my god i know we're not supposed to really root for rashad tate but look at how he look at y'all and the parlays that he made he is pretty powerful pulling all kinds of strings for Tariq just when he needs them in this case pulling the strings to help Tariq get out on bail and i'm trying to get on board with sex being a part of davis's team but him trying to coerce a confession out of Tariq and being so sure that he did it is giving very much so state's attorney which you are no longer sir and also giving liability please don't make Tariq have to cancel Christmas when you sex by the skinny your chinny chin chin you made it to the spinoff hate for you to have to die now Saxon Davis keeping Tasha and Tariq from communicating feels bigger than just not wanting her to be able to convince him to run there's definitely something more to that and I think we're going to, we're getting primed for an interesting return or pop up from her Tariq and Brayden's argument once he's finally out is one of the best scenes of the entire episode Brayden finally admits to the licks and moves in the body with Kane and apologizes for how that stuff actually set Tariq up. The dialogue in the scene is a mixture of things that need to be said, but also what the audience has been saying about Tariq for like ever, like since season three of the original Power. Not to mention a callback to season six argument between Ghost and Tariq. Tariq yells, what the fuck you even doing this for, B? People out here dying and going to jail because they literally have no other option and you playing this sh like it's a game, bro. Go tell your dad to give you a job and quit before you get somebody hurt yo this sounds very familiar and i'm so glad that brayden did not back down because he responds you really gonna stand there and act like your dad wasn't rich and well connected to i chose this life just like you i'm tired of you putting your problems off on everybody else and it's just like touche to mother and shay Tariq in this scene is struggling with the fact that brayden lies to him but also sir you giving hypocrite because you lied to everybody granted you need to i understand it you got to manipulate these people but are we really understanding I, I just need a moment where Tariq really fully stops hating his father because he's now become his father and he realizes it do we understand where James St. Patrick was at do we understand the rock and the hard place that he gets caught between when you was out here throwing tantrums and acting a monkey fool in this damn penthouse oh all right 
Tariq asked Lauren, what is there to be confused about? And honestly, I want to know too. You wore a wire, set this man up, and he's coming to you after getting out, and you throwing hissy fits all over campus and G-checking Milgram, but you still can't go back to your room and talk with Tariq. This episode showed a prime example of why Lauren isn't the right girl for Tariq, at least not in this stage in his life. And just when Tariq thought he was alone and down, Effie shows up to hold him down, and we love to see it. Effie comes to support Tariq, but she also asks the right questions, reframing things for Tariq so that he responds rationally and with strategy and not from her emotions. She helps him see how he has to bring Brayden back into the fold and Monet is an end to a means and has to be worked with for now while he stacks his paper and beats these charges. And moving forward, Effie's going to handle the transports and re-ups. Brayden will handle course correct. Effie was always the right choice. She handled the pass off from Tariq to Monet flawlessly. So we see Tariq restructure his organization as he plots his return to the top and he can't do as much as he used to because he has this ankle monitor on which is actually going to be a win for him or be something that's really for his benefit because it's going to force him to work more through others pulling him out of the day-to-day -day where he shouldn't be anyway and keeping him removed kind of like how ghost was y'all Tariq's college years are literally the making of the ghost years and I'm excited for him to make it out of this stronger smarter more connected and richer than ever if you want to see my original thoughts click this video right here and if you want to deep dive into if Monet set Lorenzo up, click this video right here. Hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Be sure to turn on your bell notifications so that you don't miss any of my Power Book 2 Ghost videos as we come in with more. There's a lot to talk about, especially after episode 6, so let's keep the conversation going. Drop a comment of what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below or any questions that you had. I'm headed there right now to respond to you. I'll see you in the next one.